This is Earth, the year 2100. This is the headquarters of Space Patrol. And men from Earth, Mars, and Venus live and work there as guardians of peace. Let's take our hover jet down to the beach for the day. We can't. We're on emergency call. I've never known it so dark in the afternoon before. Maybe a storm is brewing up. A storm on Earth? Don't be nonsensical. This is not the 20th century. But I tell you, there's a cloud in the sky. Something must have gone wrong with the cloud dispersal unit. I wonder if Colonel Rayburn knows. It's very dark suddenly. Hmm. Cold, too. Marla, get me the cloud dispersal officer. With alacrity, Colonel. What's going on? Three o'clock in the afternoon and it's as dark as night. Well, it's not our fault. Of course it is. There's a cloud blocking out the sun. Our instruments don't register any clouds. Stop using instruments and use your eyes. Can't you see the cloud in the sky? Yes, sir, but it isn't a real cloud. It's an artificial one. Artificial? I'd better speak to the Moon Observatory. Marla, I'd like I to... I already have them waiting for you. You think of everything. A Venusian has the, the facility, facility never, never to, to forget. forget. I uh, suppose you want to know about this cloud. I certainly do. Well, it isn't made of vapor. What's it made of, then? Metal particles. But it's a metal I've never come across before. I see. Now, who in space could be responsible for it? What do you sense? There is panic on Earth. The cloud we made is blocking out the sun. Earthmen are such backward creatures. It is more than a thousand years since we Neptunians stopped using the sun's rays for light and warmth, yet they still rely on the sun. They even use their mouths to speak with, and they don't believe in telepathy. <laughs> <laughs> still, we must not underrate them. Since they equip their spaceships with a magnetic field, our telepathic thoughts cannot hypnotize them. And we have not been able to make a spaceship land here for nearly two Earth years. If we don't get more slaves soon, we will have to work ourselves. Do not worry. We will soon have more. The Earthmen will die if our cloud hides the sun. And we will only take it away if they send people to work for us. I think it's time we told Colonel Ribbon what we are doing. Neptune is calling you, Colonel. Neptune? I thought they considered themselves too advanced to bother with us. Greetings, Colonel Rayburn. My name is Tyro, and I am overlord of Neptune. That's odd. I can understand you without my electron. <laughs> yes. Telepathy does not need an electronic translator. I see. This is the first time we've heard from you for years. Do you have a reason for calling? No, I'm in the dark. Yes, you're in the dark and in the cold. <laughs> what do you mean? We made the cloud that is cutting you off from the sun. What? But why? Because we need slaves, and you have stopped us from getting any. If you send us some, we will remove the cloud. I'll never send you slaves. Then our cloud will remain, and Earth will die. If you change your mind, let us know. We will keep our telepathic wave tuned in to your sonar beam. A 
I wish I could return home. Venus is never cold. Even Mars is warmer than here. Maybe Rayburn could send us on a mission to Mercury. Then we would get really hot. Rayburn's too busy thinking about Earth to worry about space patrols. If we don't get some sun soon, the North Pole will be meeting the South Pole. The oceans are freezing over, too. You will soon be able to skate from Europe to America. I did not realize how much we depended on the sun. Without light and heat, crops won't grow, oceans freeze, and Earth will have an ice age. Even the nuclear heating is breaking down. I know. It looks as though we'll have to evacuate to Venus. It's impossible to fight a cloud. I never thought I would hear you say the word impossible. Can't you find out what metal the cloud is made of? Are you telling me what to do, Marla? Yes, Colonel, I am. I know we do not have much time, but at least we must try to fight. Hmm. All right. I'll let you bully me. Ask Dart to come and see me. Yes, Colonel. Space survey? Throw a diagram of the Neptunian cloud on my video screen, please. Good afternoon, Colonel. Ah, Dart. I want you to look at this diagram. As you can see, the Neptunian cloud is 350,000 miles above us, and it's blocking out the sun's light and heat from us. We don't know how the Neptunians keep it there or what it's made of, and I'd like you to go and get me a sample of it. A sample of cloud? Yes. But how? I don't know how. It was Marla's idea. I see. Very well, sir. I'll leave at once. Speed zero to 20,000 miles an hour. Speed maintained. Scan of you are working. Check. Astro beam working. Check. Gamma rays on. Yoba rays on. All in order, Captain. I'm ready. Thanks. Galisphere 024 to central control. Ready for final check. Automatic course control on. Check. Gravity freezing cabin, on. Check. Mesen power, on. Mesen unit gaining speed. All in order. Ready to lift. Takeoff program starting now. Speed, 5,000 miles an hour rising. Space velocity maintained. Course deviation negligible. It's warmer in our galaxy than it is on Earth. We'll be approaching the cloud in less than half an hour. This is some crazy mission, all right. I've heard of collecting flutterbys, but never collecting clouds. Butterflies, Husky. Can you see the cloud on the scanner? I can see blackness. That is the cloud. Change our course and we'll go around the side of it. Wonderful. Then we'll be able to see the sun again. Galasphere 347, calling space headquarters. Captain Dart wishes to speak to you. Put him on. We're around the other side of the cloud, sir. What does it look like? Gray cotton wool. I'm going out to collect a sample now. Gray cotton wool? <laughs> if only it were. Count three, and then open the outer vacuum door, will you, Slim? With alacrity, Captain. One, two, three. I don't know whether this bag is empty or full. There. If it's not full of cloud particles now, it never will be. How are you doing, Captain? Fine. I'm coming back. Stand by to open the doors. Doors ready for opening. Wait a minute. The bag's broken. 
This cloud sample must be heavy. Things cannot be heavy when they are in space. I know that. But this is a Neptunian cloud, remember? I'm coming back for a stronger box. I have a box for you, Captain. Thanks. I hope this will be strong enough. What is the cloud made of? Millions of tiny pieces, like ash. Nobody tells me what's going on. Come out and help me, Husky. I've got the cloud sample in the box, but I can't get it back to the Gallosphere. Why not? There must be some electric force in these particles. Hurry. I'm coming. I've never known anything like this before. line back to the Gallosphere. When we give Slim the signal, he'll wind us in. Fine. Help me hold the box. Are you ready, Captain? Yes. Start hauling us in. Nothing is happening. Now it's taking a long time to collect that cloud sample. Marla? Call Dart and see if there's any trouble. The tow line isn't strong enough to pull it. We must think of something else. Space is usually dark, but it's light here. In the ordinary way, there's nothing for the light to shine on. But now it's been reflected back from this cloud. It's holding all the light and heat we should be getting on Earth. Colonel Rayburn wishes to know how you are getting on. Tell him we can't move this box. Let's try pushing instead of pulling. Oh, it's no good. I've got an idea. Slim, boost the mesen power and start moving the Gallosphere back to Earth. Why? I'm hoping the force of the Gallosphere will move this box. Very good, Captain. I hope you're right, Captain. Otherwise, we'll be left floating in space by ourselves. Mesen power on, speed increasing. working. Not too fast, Slim. Tell me when to slow down. Slow down now. We're clear of the cloud and you can wind us in. See if there's any more news from Dart. Yes, Colonel. Colonel Rayburn calling Captain Dart. Take it, Slim. Can't he wait to let me get my breath back? We have the sample of cloud, Colonel. It was extremely difficult to obtain. I understand. Return to Earth and send the particles to Professor Haggerty the minute you land. Gara, now I see why Dart had such trouble getting these cloud particles back to the Gallosphere. Call Colonel Rayburn, will you, Captain Lapeer? He's waiting to speak to you, Pop. Have you news for me, Professor? I know what this cloud is made of, and don't call me Pop. And uh, now, where was I? Ah, uh, yes, the cloud. Uh, well, it's made of electrically charged particles of xanthan. That's a mineral found in Uranus and obviously on Neptune, too. Why did Dart have such trouble moving it? Because it's electrically charged, and that makes it hold together. Now we know what it's made of. Can we disperse it? Uh, you'll have to give me time to think about it. We haven't got time. But thank you, Professor. I'll pass the information to scientists on Venus and Mars. Maybe they can come up with a suggestion. Scientists on Venus and Mars. <laughs> planning to 
to evacuate their planet. Where will they go? Venus has an excellent natural climate. <laughs> Let us call up this Colonel Rayburn and amuse ourselves with him. Earthmen really are pathetic creatures. Neptune is calling you, Colonel. I came in so that I could see them on the screen. Don't you think it's time you agreed to our plan? If you sent us a regular supply of slaves, there would be no need for Earth to become a dead planet. We prefer to evacuate. What satisfaction will a dead galaxy give you? We will not be dead, only you. <laughs> Why not send us the slaves? Think over what I've said, Colonel, and we'll speak to you again. Order my monobile, will you, Marla? I'm going to see Professor Haggerty. Good morning, Cassie. Is your father here? No, Colonel. He's at home. At home? What's he doing at home at a time like this? He's reading. Reading? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Most interesting. Yes, indeed it is. This is no time to be reading, Professor. Ah, it'll break me heart to leave me books behind when we evacuate to Venus. We're not evacuating. Some of the books are more than 500 years old. What do you mean we're not evacuating? We can't. If we do, the Neptunians say they'll throw a cloud around Venus. They're prepared to see the whole galaxy die if they don't get the slaves they want. Ah, Neptunians are such brilliant creatures. You'd think they'd be more reasonable. Because we're less advanced than they are, they despise us. It would be easier to bargain with them if we could make them respect us. And how can we do that? By dispersing this cloud. Professor, take your head out of that old book and listen to me. This is important. So is this book. It's an account of Sir Isaac Newton's burning glass that he made in 1670. What's that got to do with me? Everything, Colonel. Look at this drawing. It looks like a huge mirror. That's what it was. It was 30 feet wide, and it concentrated the sun's rays so strongly that in 30 seconds it was capable of melting a lump of gold. Now, if we could make a burning glass that would melt those xanton particles... You mean... Ah, what Isaac Newton did in 1670, Aloysius O'Brien O'Rourke Haggerty can do in 2100. I wonder how Professor Haggerty's getting on with our cloud. I'm too cold to think about it. Will Captain Dart... Please report to Professor Haggerty. Ah, news at last. It's certainly an ingenious idea. But wouldn't a laser beam burn through the xanton particles just as easily? You'd need a dozen laser beams to dissolve that cloud, and we can't afford the energy. We need every bit of electricity down here to keep us warm. You sent for me, Professor? Uh, yes, look at this. What's it made of? Hundreds of mirrors fitted together. It's called a burning glass. Very simply, me boy, this mirror must be taken above the cloud and positioned between the cloud and the sun. You mean the sun's rays must be concentrated in this mirror and directed at the cloud? Yes. Then in a few seconds, the particles will melt away. I'd give a year's salary to see those Neptunians when their precious cloud vanishes. They won't think we're so backward then. But this mirror is too small. A bigger one is being made. You'll have to tow it behind you. But remember, Dart, if your galosphere gets any reflection from the mirror, it'll dissolve, too. The Earthmen have given up their plan to evacuate their planet. At last, they realize we are too clever for them. But why haven't they agreed to our demands? If they don't send us slaves soon, they'll all be dead from frost and starvation. I'll have another talk. No time. A message has come in on our telepathic wave. A space patrol galosphere has left Earth. There's nothing unusual in that. This galosphere is towing a strange object behind it and is heading direct for our cloud. We should 
be around the side of the cloud soon. This is where the tricky part begins. We must get the sun reflected in the burning glass and then tilt it towards the cloud. But if the galosphere gets in the way for a second, we'll melt into nothing. Speed cut to a hover, Captain. Tilt the galosphere 10 degrees, Husky. The sun should be shining on the mirror now. Tilt the galosphere another two degrees, Husky. It's done, Captain. Look! The cloud's melting, and the sun's shining through it. I can see the Earth. It's worked. Let's call Rayburn and tell him the cloud's gone. We don't need to. He is calling us. Well done, boys. Now we can see the sun again. We can't wait to get back to Earth. Fine. I can guarantee you a warm reception this time. We've dispersed your cloud, Tyro. And we'll do the same with any other cloud you send. What? You heard. We're not as advanced as you are in some respects, but there's still a few things we could teach you, like automation and robots, for instance. Automation and robots? What are they? You mean you don't know how they work? What? Don't mention that word. Well, robots are mechanical slaves. Most interesting. We would like to have some. What? Are your terms? I don't dictate terms, but if Neptune became a member of the United Galactic Organization, we'd be glad to tell you how automation and robots work. We will join. Well, our planet is saved. The oceans are thawing out again. The nuclear heaters are working properly, too. Everything's in apple pie order, Captain. Uh, come on, Husky, you've missed your cue. I'm too busy being happy to feel hungry. 